We said that a galvanic cell is one which proceeds spontaneously to generate electricity. And so we need a way to determine if a redox reaction is spontaneous or not. So let's look at how we do this. And we can do this in three different ways. We can do this in terms of the cell potential. We can do this in terms of delta G for the reaction that's taking place. And we can do this in terms of K, the equilibrium constant. So let's work through each of these. In terms of the cell potential, spontaneous reactions are those which have a positive cell potential. So we just looked at an example in the last video of iron, solid, and magnesium ions going to iron and magnesium. And we calculated, based on the oxidation and reduction half reactions, that this cell potential was negative 1.92 volts. So this is an example of a reaction which is not spontaneous. So let's look then at how E is related to delta G. So just a reminder, the cell potential, this is the potential energy difference in joules divided by the charge in coulombs. And that gives us the units of volts on E cell. So this potential energy difference, that represents the maximum amount of work that can be done in the system. So we can write then that the maximum work is equal to negative Q, time, which is the charge on the electron, times E cell. And we can rewrite this for the Q to have N times F times E cell. And in this case, N is the number of electrons involved in the reaction And F is Faraday's constant. Which has a value of 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. So this is essentially giving us our charge here based on however many electrons are present. Right. It's also true, though, for this kind of reaction, that delta G for a chemical reaction represents the maximum amount of work that could be done. And so if we use these two ideas together, we can find that delta G is equal to negative N times F times E cell. So this is the way that delta G and the cell potential are related to one another. Right? We know that for a reaction to be spontaneous, that E cell needs to be positive. F is always positive, it's a constant. N is always positive, it's just the integer number of electrons being transferred. So when E cell is positive, then this whole thing is negative. So if E cell is positive, for a spontaneous reaction, delta G is less than zero. And this matches up exactly with what we've been talking about before that a spontaneous reaction is one that reduces the overall Gibbs free energy.
So let's look at an example where we calculate delta G for an electrochemical cell. So let's consider that we have the reaction I2 solid plus two bromine ions forming two iodine ions and bromine liquid. So the oxidation reaction here is for bromine. And this has a potential of negative 1.9 volts because that's going in the opposite direction that it's shown in the table for the reduction of iodine we have the reduction potential here as 0.54 volts so E cell is just the sum of these and it's negative 0.55 volts so once we have the cell potential then we can calculate delta G in this reaction we have two electrons being transferred. So if we have this happening on a per mole basis, we have two moles of electrons. We multiply by F. And then we multiply by the cell potential, remembering that one volt is a joule per coulomb. And this gives us delta G equal to 110 kilojoules per mole. So we had a negative cell potential with a positive delta G. Those both together tell us that this reaction is also not spontaneous. So let's look finally at the relationship between K, the equilibrium constant, and the cell potential. So we have seen before that delta G is equal to negative RT ln of K, where K is our equilibrium constant. We can substitute for delta G, though, N, F, E cell, and that gives us this reaction. We can rearrange to get an expression for the cell potential in terms of the equilibrium constant which looks like this. And it is common then to simplify this equation by plugging in a value for R, which is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. If we're doing this at 25 degrees C, then we can plug in 298K for the temperature. We know that F is equal to 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Also, for some reason, electrochemists prefer to operate with a base 10 log, and so we substitute for ln of K 2.303 base 10 log of K. If we make all of those simplifications, and we keep in mind that this equation is now only for a temperature of 25 degrees C, we end up with the following simplified relationship, where in the numerator we have 0.0592 volts, so that V is the unit, not a variable, divided by N, the number of electrons being transferred, times the base 10 log of K. So we can consider our, our example from before of iodine and bromine, and so we had our cell potential of 0.55 volts. We had two electrons being transferred, so we just need to solve this for K, and when we do, 
we get k equal to 2.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. We know this reaction is not spontaneous, and in the case of k, k less than 1 is the indicator that the reaction is not spontaneous. So let's summarize. We have this relationship between the cell potential, delta G of the reaction, and K, the equilibrium constant. We know that delta G is related to K through delta G equals negative RT ln of K. We know that delta G is related to the cell potential through negative NF times the E cell. And we know that K and E are related to one another through that relationship that we just derived. 0.0592 volts divided by N times the base 10 log of K. So for a spontaneous reaction, we need E cell to be positive, we need delta G to be negative, and we need K to be greater than 1. A reaction that is not spontaneous is one in which E cell is negative, delta G is positive, or K is less than 1. You only actually need to figure out any one of these, since they're all self-consistent, in order to make a determination about the spontaneity of a reaction.